Now, all of the, the top of the party, the likes of Jenrick, Braverman, Gove, Dowden, Tugendhat, Patel, they don't believe that settlements are illegal. And that means, I think, we're entitled to call them extremists. Uh, they should be called out. And for Suella Braverman today to say that there is not a humanitarian problem in Gaza and there's plenty of food and she's seen the photographs, frankly, it is so disgusting, so repulsive, so repellent, that I think she should immediately have the whip withdrawn. Uh, you call for an immediate arms embargo and immediate clarifications of whether UK components were used in that airstrike that killed the aid workers early this week, three of them Britons. Why, why is that necessary? Um, I haven't actually called for that, but I have called for um, uh, a suspension of arms sales. I mean, I think it's impossible now for any of the Foreign Office lawyers to justify uh, continuing sales to Israel. There are clearly, I mean, obvious breaches uh, in the rules governing this. So, yes, uh, sales should stop. Um, we don't sell that much, but it's very important that if we've set the rules for ourselves, we should adhere to them. And uh, that's why I think it would be very difficult for any Foreign Office lawyer to feel comfortable giving advice to the Foreign Secretary that actually these sales can continue. Suella Bravman's in Israel right now, the former Home Secretary, she said, I think that it would be a tragic shame if we were to walk away from our closest ally in this region. And it's also true that the October the 7th attacks were the single deadliest day for Israelis in history. The Israeli government's still fighting a war against Hamas. Hamas hasn't released the hostages. Should we allow this airstrike, which Israel is saying was a mistake, to totally redefine our approach to the Middle East and our foreign policy? No, but it sparks a focus which has been lacking. I mean, this did not start on October the 7th. I mean, let's be clear, I deplore anti-Semitism. I deplore the violence of October the 7th. Uh, and I deplore anyone who says that Israel should not exist. Uh, those three things are very important always to state. However, What's been going on for decades is a breach of international law by the Israelis. The Israeli Defence Force does not follow international law. Indeed, it supports those violent settlers who go and take someone else's land in a country which is not theirs. So this gradual annexation of Palestine is the origin of this problem. But let me point out one more thing, and that goes to your Braverman point. There is a, a cadre of people at the top of the Conservative Party who are totally in hoc to extremist interpretations of Israel as put forward by Netanyahu and the Conservative Friends of Israel, and they dominate thinking in Downing Street. Only recently has the confidence of the Foreign Office been restored by the appointment of David Cameron. But Braverman does not believe that settlements are illegal. And I call on all journalists, when they're interviewing someone, uh, be it uh, a politician on, on, on in any party, uh, or even, um, you know, the Board of Deputies of British Jews, to say, well, excuse me, do you believe in international law and that settlements are illegal? Now, all of the, the top of the party, the likes of Jenrick, Braverman, Gove, Dowden, Tugendhat, Patel, they don't believe that settlements are illegal. And that means I think we're entitled to call them extremists. Uh, they should be called out. And for Suella Braverman today to say that there is not a humanitarian problem in Gaza and there's plenty of food and she's seen the photographs, frankly, it is so disgusting, so repulsive, so repellent that I think she should immediately have the whip withdrawn. also called this morning for Tom Tugendhat to be sacked as security minister, for Lord Pickles and Lord Polak to be expelled from the Lords. Why is that? If you read Tom Tugendhat's Wikipedia page, he says that he does not believe in UN um, uh, resolutions in respect of Israel and settlements. Well, he's our blooming security minister. So if our security minister, uh, particularly at a time like this, uh, when Gaza is the issue, does not believe in international law and that settlements are illegal, he should not be a minister. So if he still believes that, and it's in his Wikipedia page uh, and verified in it, uh, then um, he should be sacked. But if he repudiates it and uh, withdraws it, then maybe he, he can be saved. But there is a problem. For, for too long, for 20 years, the Conservative Friends of Israel has bypassed all proper processes of government and linked to donor money in very subtle ways, has basically governed our foreign policy, bypassing the Foreign Office, to inject into thinking a, a particularly Netanyahu pro-settlement pro-greater Israel uh, uh, point of view. I'll give you two examples. One, 
Michael Gove is putting forward uh, a sanctions bill, which refuse, which means that councils cannot boycott uh, products and illegal settlements. Well, if they're illegal settlements, the products are illegal. So this is actually a bill against the government's own policy. When it, we had leadership contests, it's all on, you know, there's lots of footage of this. I mean, the likes of Lord Pollack would try and extract from the leadership candidates a promise that they would move the uh, British embassy uh, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Now, this is in total contravention of all our previous policy, but that is an attempt of undue improper influence as agents of another country into our own politics. And this should be investigated and, 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 and properly stopped. And, and it, it is perhaps the longest running scandal in British politics that has ever gone unmentioned. Does, does some of this rhetoric you're using, Sir Alan, not harm your cause, though, because you're talking about sort of nefarious influence, foreign money. You know, you, you also said before, you know, we should ask the, the, the Board of Deputies of British Jews if they believed in international law. You know, do you not see how some people might infer from what you're saying a sort of quite sinister agenda or might, or might rip, misrepresent you as believing something or insinuating something you're not? Because, you know, you, you, when you use these, this sort of language in relation to Israel, it, it's not really a hop and skip and a jump to, to, to sort of quite dark territory, no? Yes, it is. Well, what you're trying to imply without saying it, because you're, you're, you're very sensible, is that somehow I can be accused of anti-Semitism on the back of this. Well, that's not the case. I believe in justice for Palestine and Palestinians. And what I object to very strongly and passionately is that I think that the interests of Palestinians are being trampled over and are being improperly relegated to nothing by influence over the top of our politics. And I say this very openly and very straightforwardly, and uh, I, I don't think it can be denied. Now, if you want to interpret it uh, in, in the way that you have, that, that, that is an illogical and improper leap. I think the facts need to be looked at, uh, as I've just stated. So, I mean, things are coming right with David Cameron, and the eyes of the world are now on Gaza, where Israeli excess uh, is causing... Uh, starvation and famine to the best part of two million people. But I think I'd also th say this. I support moderate Israelis. I support moderate Palestinians. Mm. And to some extent, the, the Hamas attack is a failure of Western diplomacy, because in all the time that Netanyahu was being increasingly extreme within his own country... And being protested and by against by, by moderate Israelis as well. Well, absolutely. I mean, you've absolutely put your finger on it, that at a time when the moderates were probably in the majority uh, in Israel and needed encouragement, there was not a squeak from us and many other Western countries about expanding settlements in the West Bank, uh, which, of course, drove out moderate Palestinians. So the moderates in Israel were frozen out. The moderates in the West Bank were being sort of disempowered. And you end up with this auction of extremes.